Okay, we're seeing some folks come in. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jenny, Mary, Mindy, Sally. Uh, great to have you all. Um, we're going to get started in just a couple moments here, just so we get everybody a chance to get signed on. Um, and uh, we've got our our wonderful presenter with us today. And okay, so we're seeing a few more attendees popping in. Hi, Amanda and Amber and Ashley, Billy, yeah. Brandon, Jenny, Jessica, Kim, some names I recognize here, Lindsay, Mark, definitely recognize Mark and Mary, Melissa, hi, Melissa, Mindy and Sally, definitely recognize your name too. So it's just nice to see some familiar names um, all, all joining in. Well, I think we might as well just get it started. Um, you know, as people uh, roll in, that's that's fine. We'll just go along with it. Um, hello and welcome to our second mentorship webinar. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, how to get started. Uh, and Natalie, our uh, wonderful uh, mentor educator, is here to share all of her wisdom and and knowledge uh, based on the. Uh, mentorship model that they developed over at the Christian Living Communities in Colorado. Uh, so, and then we've got Travis with us as well. Thank you for being here, Travis, um, from our customer service team. And um, Travis and I will be uh, staffing the chat box and the question and answer box. Please feel free to type in your questions as we go along. Uh, if it's a question that uh, myself or Travis can answer, we'll go ahead and answer it through the Q&A box. And we'll share all the common um, frequently asked questions at the end so that everybody can benefit from um, the shared knowledge of the group. Uh, so uh, without any further ado, I'll hand it over to Natalie. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you, Kate, for having us. Oh, this is really exciting. Uh, so hi, my name is Natalie Knopf from Christian Living Communities, referred to as CLC. So you'll see that throughout. We are a faith-based, largest not-for-profit organization in Colorado, serving thousands of residents and guests daily in our nine communities. We have all levels of care. We have residential living, assisted living, assisted living with memory care, skilled nursing, short-term rehab, adult day, and home health, as well as Capella Living Solutions, offering management and consulting for four communities in two states. And we just celebrated our 50 years of service in May, which is um, amazing. During our time together, I will be sharing information about the mentorship program implementation at your community during two separate webinars. Each are an hour long, a few weeks apart with two phases. The two phases or webinars will provide different internal processes to set up uh, and implement um, your successful program within your community. These are intentionally divided so that um, when you're implementing and setting up systems, you're not overwhelmed. Um, we realize that this is quite a robust program. It's extremely successful and we want to give it to you in stages so that you can be successful. The audience for these two webinars are the community's leadership team to understand the fundamentals of the mentor program for internal community support. This is really crucial. Your community leadership team has to really support this program internally uh, within your community. And this is also intended for the mentor champion, also referred to as mentor champ. This is the individual that will lead the community, um, lead the program within your community and set systems and the foundation to support and oversee the mentor program. We did have a question the last time we presented if this needed to be a nurse and it certainly can be a nurse. However, it could be anyone in the community that um, really exemplifies that leadership um, either formal or informal, and who will really be an exceptional uh, person within your community to oversee and run this program. 
The mentor program is a community-based self-supporting program that allows the mentor champion who, at all, who will have all the tools and education to onboard the new CNA mentors at any time within your community. The CNA mentors onboard new CNAs upon hire, and we use the mentor program as an extension of our clinical orientation for our CNAs. So we would really suggest doing the same for you. Today, phase one focuses on implementing the program within your community and preparing for the mentorship training. So it's gonna give a more broad view as well as a little bit of homework, but don't let that homework scare you. It's just systems um, to help get you prepared for this program. And July 7th from 11 to 12 will be phase two. And that's the nuts and bolts for sustainability uh, for that success and longevity of the program. Ah, thank you, Kate. The success of our mentor program offers our new associates really two essential elements during clinical orientation a friend at work, and the confidence in knowing what to do. So in the chat, um, type in, if you have a best friend at work, a good friend at work, or um, someone that is extremely important for you to see every day at work. So type that into the chat. We think that having a friend at work is really essential for individuals to have that sense of belonging within your community. And the mentor program offers this um, as an automatic for your new associates coming in. And of course, the confidence in knowing what to do. We all want to succeed at work. We all want to know what to do. If you teach me what to do, I can do it. I can excel. But if I don't have the training and I don't have the knowledge in what to do, I'm not going to be successful. And I'm going to want to move to a different job. Uh, and that's just the fact. So this is teaching uh, an individual, that friend, and knowing what to do. You know, uh, we're also going to teach you how to energize and engage your staff while developing the, your future organizational leaders this is really a leadership position within your community. Uh, so a few of the trainings that are coming up, put it on your calendar, July 12th, 2.30 to 3.30, that CNA competency and stations, we're gonna teach you that. July 13th from eight to 12 is that mentor train the trainer training, which is essential. And July 21st, we are gonna have a Q&A from 2.30 to 3.30. Um, just to ensure that you don't have, well, we'll answer all your questions that you have. We're hoping you have questions. All right, uh, next uh, slide, please. Most important training is going to be that July 13th, 8 to 12, mentor train the training. Um, and then, of course, we're going to celebrate, right? Because anytime that we implement a new um, program into our community, we really want to celebrate. So we're going to give you some ideas on how to do that. But this mentor train the training on July 13th is the exact same training that the mentor champion will be teaching the new mentors at your community anytime you would like new mentors to be uh, to start at your community. So this training will be essential. So mark your calendar. Next slide, please. All right, so why a CNA mentor program at your community? In part, it's for retention. Um, but at the heart of everything that we do, it's really for the residents we're honored to serve. So if you could put into the chat, why are you um, thinking of being that mentor champion within your community? Or why are you the leader at your community that is championing the champion at your community? Why do you go to work every day? What is the heart of everything that you do? So if you could put that into the chat, what is the heart of everything that you do at your community? 
The mentor program is, again, a formal process and a part of our orientation and onboarding for all new clinical uh, CNAs to optimize uh, staff retention, satisfaction, and it's also an opportunity to promote within your organization. So I'll go through just briefly how the mentor program started, just in case you missed um, our last opportunity that we met, um, in which Pat McBride, who is our current VP of Clinical and Compliance, shared how the mentor program started at CLC. Uh, our three legacy communities, or our original communities in 2012, had a clinical retention rate of 49%. And in 2019, it was at 87%. Uh, I think we've all taken a dip during the pandemic, unfortunately. And, um, but 87% in 2019 is, is pretty significant. And how did we do this? What is the success of our program? And that's what we're gonna share with you um, when you're implementing this program. You're gonna have success as well. So this program has received many accolades. It's been purchased by other organizations. It's been taught at conferences, including Leading Age Wisconsin and shared with other organizations. And the two elements that I've already shared that really are essential that this program offers is, again, that friend at work and the confidence in knowing how to do your job. So when Pat was asked to look into our retention rate in 2012, which again was 49%, she interviewed um, associates that had left our communities. She um, interviewed associates that stayed and she interviewed our residents because we know that when we have a low retention rate at the essence, it's our residents that are affected. They are affected first and foremost. So the reason that individuals stay were, again, a friend at work and I know what to do. And it wasn't because we had a good system in place. It was because they loved our community, they loved our residents, and they kind of learned by trial and error how to do their job and became very successful at it. The individuals that left shared that um, we had outdated orientation and training programs. We were um, scattered throughout our three communities. We had very much silos. Our training varied. Um, it was essentially, okay, we have Sally that's starting today. Who wants 50 cents more an hour to train this individual? Well, they might not be trained in order to train another individual. And some people don't like to train. Some new hires never even received a welcome. Welcome to our community. We're so happy to have you. They just showed up at the front door and now what? Interviewing techniques were really inconsistent. Our orientation, our clinical information, our policies, procedures, our competencies, everything was inconsistent. Each of our communities did it different. Managers did not have the time to focus on our new hires. As, as well-intentioned as they were, they were overly stressed as well. And so they were not able to focus on our new hires. And then nursing orientation wasn't focused on our mission, our values, our standards of service, and our overall culture of CLC. And our new hires, really fell into negative behaviors and practices. Um, so in the chat, um, can you put in, have you ever hired a CNA that has worked in the industry a really long time and they know exactly what to do? However, they, should, they take shortcuts, they don't do best practices, <laughs> You know, it's just sometimes inevitable. And um, so have you hired those individuals? And wouldn't it be great to have a system where you could kind of retrain them in order to be successful at your community the way that you like to do things? 
So put that into the chat. Have you ever hired someone um, like that individual? We have. Natalie, Natalie, yeah. as people are putting in their answers, I can share a few of the uh, responses that we got uh, oh, yes, to the please. why. Why do you want to do this? Um, we've gotten some really yes. great um, feedback. Uh, one person says, Mark says, you know, person first director of care for our villagers. So again, residents. Oh. Uh, Tracy says, Love residents it. are the heart of our community. Yes. Um, Mary says, well-trained staff equals happy staff equals happy residents. Yes. Uh, uh, Kim says, to create a positive attitude for all employees. Yeah. Uh, Amanda says, I love help to help my staff grow. It's an ongoing process and never ending. It's a warm feeling yeah. to see growth in our care partners. Oh, um, yes. That's I love why the I love way you wrote Peter. that. Yeah, the way that she wrote yeah. that is so, so nice. Um, uh, Missy says, happy staff and happy residents. Yes. Ashley says, I am the HR manager. Happy employees mean happy residents. So yeah, yes. really, everybody's really tying it back, like you're yeah. saying, to you know, you create this environment. It makes people happy. It make yeah. it has lasting effects. Um, and we're getting a lot of yeses uh, to to come back with your your question about the wouldn't it be great if we could find a way to retrain them? So thank yes. you everybody for your responses. This is it's really great. Oh my gosh, thank you, and I appreciate Kate you sharing that with me. Thank you so much because I don't see that that real time. So thank you. I am curious also, how did individuals answer having a friend at work? Because I know I have a best friend at work and I, I you know, it just makes my day when I'm working with my best friend. Uh, yes, we have uh, important to see, someone important to see each day. I've got uh, one person who did all caps, important to see. Um, so yes, yeah, so everybody is agreeing that yes, it is so important to have that person. Um, yes, someone says, yes, I have someone very important to see every day, a friend, a friend at work. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's really does ring true um, yeah. with, our, with our, uh, our folks on the call. Good, good, good. And then I have another question here in one second. So you can see how individuals that left our community saying, oh my gosh, you, you, you know, you had an outdated orientation and training. I didn't get a welcome. I, um, my trainer wasn't very excited about training me. My manager, I, you, they didn't even greet me. You can see how all of those just lead to endless recruitment. And this really does have a financial impact also. Retention affects your bottom line as well as our residents care. It, it affects both. So with the financial impact, I mean, endless recruiting, in, it, uh, we all know what's involved in trying to find an individual to cover that shift that we now have available and open. So put it to the chat. How much do you think it costs to hire, orient, train, recruit? Um, what are your thoughts? How much do you think it costs to um, get this individual hired, the CNA hired within your community. And it sounds like somebody works in HR, so they might be cheating. They might have the actual numbers. <laughs> I like this response, astronomical with three exclamation points. Yes, astronomical, <laughs> exactly. Thousand, all caps, yes. three, five, three to $5,000. Yes, yes. Yeah, and actually, yeah, that is really close. Um, according to Relias Research published in 2020 to replace a CNA, an organization can spend between three to $6,000 per individual. So you can see where in 2012, our retention rate being 49%, and now it's 87%. That is a huge percentage to increase by and not spend three to $6,000 per CNA to hire. And it's an emotional impact for those that are at the community, including our nurse leaders that have to work the floor or cover, 
um, it, it can be very taxing and burnout and overtime and increased patient load and long hours and job dissatisfaction, work-life imbalance, I think that's a big one, and agency. I mean, just to name a few, having agency in our communities is very pricey. And the bonuses that we're paying right now are just astronomical. So having, um, having that retention rate at 87%, affects our bottom line in addition to survey. So think about how retention can aid in your surveys, increase your surveys. So write in the chat, how do you think your retention can help your surveys? And then we'll go to the next slide. I know for us moving from a five star down to a four star or a three star is very costly in nursing homes. How can it, how can better retention help your survey? Um, so with consistency, when someone, when we have a new mentor or a new mentee that starts, so a new CNA that starts, they're for instance taught all the competencies the right way the right steps and they're doing it correct all the time we hope <laughs> that's our intent so when we have a surveyor come in they're already performing their tasks the correct way they don't have to think about whether a surveyor or someone else is following them because they're they've been taught the correct way to do that task and potentially save us from a tag it is Oh, sorry, sorry to be like, you know, we, yeah. I just want to share. So we've got less errors, more qualified, experienced yep. staff, yep. better yep. experienced staff means less complaints yes. and knowing policies and procedures. Yes, absolutely. All of those will help your survey. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, Missy was asking, uh, knowing policies and, oh yeah, policies and procedures. Absolutely. Yeah. So um what exactly is the mentor program again it's really that formal process i really want to share that with you it's a formal process for all of your cnas coming into your community and a part of your orientation onboarding um we provide a one-year mentorship program i know that um through WISC caregiver care uh, careers this is a six-month program with the bonuses at six months However, you may want to think about designing um, the mentorship program to be for a full year. Um, and if you would like some individual guidance on maybe what that would look like, feel free to reach out to Pat um, and myself and we can help you um, kind of brainstorm some different ways to do that. So a mentor is a person who takes special interest in helping another person learn, develop, and succeed. Mentoring is a process whereby the mentor and the mentee work together to discover the mentee's potential abilities and builds on them. So this is a positive program. A mentee is a person who is in a new position and is a partner in the relationship with the mentor. Really, the goals of the mentor program are to, again, provide structure for the mentoring relationships. So we automatically, the first day we start, greeted at the front door, we have a friend at work. And then we're going to help that new associate gain the understanding and organizational values, relationships, and unwritten rules. We're going to have them recognize and reward experienced associates for the quality of their work and their commitment and well being of our organization. That's going to be our mentor to provide a stable work environment in which all associates can learn and grow. We want this for retention, for that long term associate within our community. So, prior to attending the train the trainer mentor training, the mentor is recommended for the program um, by either their peers or a manager, uh, or they can apply individually to the supervisor or the mentor champ. 
an application is then filled out with an interview following. So I'll share a little bit more about that process here in just a few minutes. All right, next slide. The mentor champion. Um, so if you could put into the chat, has your community identified who is going to be the mentor champion? So have you identified, yes or no? Oh, me, love it. Yes, I'm seeing that. All right, perfect. So the mentor champion. So you are going to oversee the program at your community. And I'm hoping, and I'm pretty certain seeing from the chat that you above all, you love to teach your patient, you're detail oriented, you're seen as a leader. Again, this can be informal and you really live your culture. And of course, you're passionate about resident care. You are going to be the one that um, goes through the, um, the WISC care givers careers, um, four hour train the training mentor training. You're gonna oversee the mentor program at your community level, set the mentor budget, um, so with the mentor budget, this is your homework for today before we meet for um, our July session. Discuss with your upper management what that budget looks like. Currently at, CN, uh, at CLC, I'll share with you, we offer $500 per mentee. Um, again, this is throughout the full year. We pay a bonus at... Um, after three days of orientation on the floor, that's shadowing. Uh, bonus when all competencies are completed and given to the mentor champion. These are housed so that you are survey ready. You have every competency um, completed so that when survey comes in, hey, was so-and-so trained on this? Why, yes, here's the competency. Um, we also give a bonus at re uh, retention of 30 day, 60 day, 90 day, 120 day, six month, and one year. That one year is essential. Uh, studies have found that if an individual stays for a year, they will be a long term employee. Um, so we know that the bonus. Um, through this program is at six months. Um, however, we would suggest have this program for a full year. You do not need to put additional money from your community into this bonus program. It could be simply having um, coffee with your mentee and mentor at the bistro that you, at your community, or a lunch together at your community, a dinner together. Um, movie tickets, whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be a monetary amount. Just a recognition um, is really essential as well. So to, um, kind of think about and brainstorm uh, with your upper management, uh, kind of what you're looking to do. And then also you're gonna need a budget for supplies and copying. Um, we always suggest the mentor pins and certificates and ribbons once they've completed the training, once your new CNA mentors have completed the training. And we have information on where to purchase those as well. Um, so you wanna think kind of globally on, uh, on a budget. Conduct the new mentor training as needed. So that's the beauty of this program is that it's housed within your community. So as you're onboarding new CNAs and with attrition, you've lost mentors, you can onboard mentors at any time. Set expectations at the community that this is really an elevated role so that you have a CNAs that want to become mentors. This is an elevated role. Incorporated again into clinical orientation, a process to take, test out competencies or skills for existing associates if needed. Pair that new CNA associate with a mentor. So you'll be working with the scheduler, whoever that is, 
when you have a new CNA that's starting out at your community, you're automatically going to pair them with a mentor um, and for that mentor-mentee relationship. And you're going to track um, who that mentor is for that mentee. And we do have a spreadsheet available to help you with that. Collect mentor-mentee evaluation forms. Um, so I'll give more information about that in a few minutes. Collect completed competencies again, skills, so that you're always survey ready. Um, enter the, um, oh, no, that doesn't apply, sorry. You're going to also audit the paperwork and bonuses um, processed through the WISC Caregiver Career Program um, that Kate has shared before. And then implement and expand the roles for mentors. We're going to give some ideas um, during this uh, phase two on how you can expand the role and make it super fun because everybody wants to be a mentor. And then the monthly mentor meetings, um, you'll want to start a, a monthly mentor meeting for continued engagement and ways to expand that role within your community. We'll give you some ideas on that as well during phase two. We will be encouraging communities to, um, again, continue that relationship for one year, whatever that looks like at your community. You're gonna conduct the new mentor training as needed. You're gonna set those expectations again at um, your community. And really, I'm telling you, this is like the best program ever. It is so incredibly rewarding. You're gonna love being a mentor champ. All right, next slide. For all of the paperwork, um, at the end, you will have a binder that um, has all of the paperwork, all of the supporting information for you to have a training manual at your community. And so WIS Caregiver Careers is currently setting up an online folder, which is going to be password protected. Um, we will send this to you using the information that you use to register for this webinar once it's set up. And we're anticipating it'll be set up and ready to go um, either today or tomorrow. So that is coming soon. You will have all the tools that you need to implement this mentor program. Everything is laid out for you. We've made it really simple. All right, next slide. So <laughs> I think everybody went through um, through N95 uh, respirator training, correct? The OSHA Respiratory Protection Program. Uh, fit testing, did everybody do that at your community? You can put a yes <laughs> or a no, um, but that's where this picture comes from. We had to have fun with it, right? It was um, an incredibly crazy two and a half years and it's still continuing, but we're, we are finding ways to have fun. So this is one way you can use your mentors. Your mentors can be taught the respiratory protection program in 95 uh, fit testing, um, because the only requirement for a nurse is to uh, review the medical evaluation if it's been set up by your medical director as, um, as a delegated role. But your CNAs can, can perform fit testing if they're educated. And so that's, that's one way that we use our mentors. So just remember the mentor program and clinical orientation really complement each other. All new associates um, for us, we auto assign the federal and state mandated education as well as evidence-based practices and survey readiness contact, uh, content to be completed within the first three days upon starting at the community. Our, oh, and we also do additional um, uh, dementia specific education as well. Our new CNAs do not start on the floor until they have completed the, um, the community clinical orientation. Although our mentors do greet them, you know, that first day, they help get them set up for orientation, um, set up all those systems so they have that friend at work and a smiling face to greet them. And then on that fourth day, 
um, that's when the new associate and the mentor work together um, side by side. So that's how we, um, how we set up our clinical orientation. Uh, take what you like and incorporate what you want. And if you have a good system, that's perfect as well. Um, but within those, um, with those three days of shadowing, the mentor really teaches the new CNA, the real life application of what's been learned. Um, and the mentor duties really include being prepared for that new associate's arrival the first day to work and setting up all the needed supplies. Uh, welcome and introduce the new associate to their work environment, other associates, and especially our residents. As we are taking our new CNAs through our communities, it's really important that our residents are introduced to them as well. Because again, that's the heart of our, that's the heart of the work that we do. And our residents are just as interested to know our new associates as our new associates are interested in knowing our residents. And then be available to that new associate for training in skills competency and policy and procedures and report regularly to HR or uh, the department supervisor or the mentor program leader if there's any concerns for the mentee or about the mentee. Um, and we'll talk a little bit further about that in phase two as well. And so if you could put into the chat, do you already have a formal orientation process? And um, it could be yes or no. And um, what are your best practices? How do you orient uh, your new CNAs into your community? Or um, how could you see complementing the new mentor program with clinical orientation? How can you how can you pair those together? I think it'd be fun for um, all the attendees to see that. And then next slide. And um, Kate, do you want to read through some of those? Are we getting some answers? Not. Oh yeah, we have one. Yes, one day orientation, all new hires of a full day with our department heads. Oh. So direct access to the leaders. I love that. That's a great best practice. Then they feel comfortable. They know who to go to. They know what they do. I love that. That's great. Um, Jessica says, um, yes, we have a formal four-day orientation, maybe. And then a question could make it a day five, maybe. Um, yeah. And then Mary says, yes, we have two classroom days with several different sessions, i.e. Um, SW does abuse dietitian oh social worker so sw social worker oh, yeah. does abuse dietitian does nutrition wound care nurse does skin etc so again like access to those specialists within oh. the community which is nice um oh, nice. ashley says lunch with ceo and oh. several department heads oh nice. wow that is really nice what a treat <laughs> what a treat um Boy, having your subject experts within your community teaching those specific areas for clinical orientation is great. That's best practice. Love that. Absolutely. Who better to know uh, abuse than the social worker or nutrition than the dietitian or wounds than the nurse, you know, the wound care nurse. That's great. Thank you for that, everyone. I think that helps everybody kind of start to think about clinical orientation and what you want it to look like because you can, with the mentor program, um, I mean, really, the sky's the limit. You, with this new program, you can implement some new best practices into your clinical orientation. It's a really exciting time to do that. And if others have ideas, feel free to put that into the chat as well. I think it's really important that we all learn together um, how, how to incorporate having our new CNA just really feel like a part of that community, our community, um, when they walk through our doors. All right. So the... Um, 
Let me see what slide. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Kate. So we're going to identify that new CNA mentor. So when you get ready, the mentor champ, to start training your current CNAs to become mentors within your community at any time, what individual are you going to choose? <laughs> so really start to think about that. Um, for us, our mentors are, it's that person that already teaches everybody. You have those individuals, right, at the community that it's not a formal role, but they love helping others learn. They step right in. They want to teach. They want to have people shadow them. They want to be engaged. They make the new person feel extremely welcome. Um, I think everybody can picture who those individuals are within their community. It's really that person who takes that special interest in helping others learn, develop, succeed. They offer insight, knowledge, perspective, and wisdom that can be useful for our new associate. Um, for ourselves, we identified a mentor for each neighborhood and shift for pairing on the floor. The reason that we did that was we identified, as we all know, that our morning uh, shift and our afternoon shift and our uh, overnight shift, they all have different tasks and different things to uh, complete within their time allotted. So really, if you can um, have a mentor for each neighborhood so that our new associates can get to know the residents that they're gonna be taking care of, they're gonna know um, that Sam likes to have his coffee first thing in the morning with a newspaper, or that Deborah likes to have lunch out on the patio um, with her um, with her card uh, card game friends. You know, we know these things about our residents, and so we can share that information with our new associate, and then we're going to pair them. Uh, so that during each of those shifts, they know what tasks also need to be performed during that time. Our, um, the new mentors that you're thinking about training at your community, they're going to complete a written application and they're going to have a personal interview with each potential candidate. So I'll go through that next. Uh, so next slide. Remember that this is an elevated role within your community. This is a new exciting opportunity for growth and retention. You want this to be um, really special for those that are selected to be a mentor. Those mentors can be recommended by um, their supervisor, uh, other coworkers within the community, their peers, uh, leadership. And once they're identified, you would go up to that um, potential mentor and just explain a little bit about the program, ask them if they think that they would be interested. Um, you really want to make sure that this is something that they're interested in, because what we have found in the past is uh, some some individuals that we think would be amazing educators, teachers, mentors, they just didn't have the heart for it. You know, they, they, they just want to do their job and go home, which is fine. But um, we don't want to spend, you know, we don't want to send them to a, a all day training and then have it revealed that this is really not their passion. We want people to be passionate. So the application uh, would be obtained from their supervisor or the mentor champ. The appl application is completed by answering all the questions listed. The questions are super simple, very easy. Um, and this is in your toolbox as well. You'll have a copy of, um, of these um, papers as well. Once the application is completed, it's returned to the mentor champ at the community. Each associate's application is reviewed for completeness 
attendance standards and disciplinary actions. Once reviewed for these items, the supervisor, the executive director, or the associate executive director are required to sign the application. Then the mentor champion um, would go ahead and interview that associate. Again, it's a formal process for this elevated role. We wanna make sure that they are really interested um, in this position. I have to tell you, we have interviewed, oh gosh, hundreds, you know, over, over the years. This is, we've had this program for 10 years. Um, if someone has the passion and we um, believe that they're gonna be amazing, we have not turned anybody away. But the application process is um, set so again, they know that this is an elevated role and their peers know that this is an elevated role. The application would then be kept in the employee record. So each, um, we, uh, we have the mentor program policy that we um, have put together, which you will have as well. And each of our candidates that are recommended um, have a certain criteria that, that we have already set. So for instance, they have to be within good standing within the organization, um, not currently in uh, progressive disciplinary procedures. They meet our attendance standards because remember, this person is going to be setting the standards for your new CNAs must have worked for the organization at least six months, um, except for our leadership team. Our leadership team also goes through the mentor program. Um, we have six months so that they can really get to know your community, the residents, their coworkers. Um, they can really get a feel uh, for your organization and represent it well with their new uh, CNA, CNAs that start and on that are onboarded, exhibit strong admiration for and are proud to work for your organization. They have positive communication and they promote teamwork within the workplace, understands and embraces the goals of the program, and they're willing to commit and complete the mentorship training and onboarding program for a minimum of one year. Uh, so again, you're gonna have that policy. There's a lot of other additional criteria that are listed in that policy. Um, so take a look and make sure that it um, is something that you want to implement as well. We really suggest having a policy and procedure. Um, that way, everyone knows the standards for your mentor program. All right. And next slide. When you're teaching at your community, the mentor trained the trainer with new mentors, you're gonna to want to prepare um, for your training packets. Um, so some of the papers that you're gonna be receiving are going to be how to prepare at the community level for your trainings. Um, so there's going to be two training preparation question sheets um, if you are a community that is pretty large, you're in different parts of Wisconsin, you know, like hundreds of miles apart. Like we have some communities that are three, 400 miles from our community as well as other states. So you can set up virtual training um, or you could also set up in-person training. In-person live training at your community is always the best option. Um, but if needed, there's some worksheets to help you prepare uh, your packets and competencies for training day. Also, for the skills in the afternoon, so you're going to have didactic training in the morning, and then you're going to have skills, competencies in the afternoon, and we're going to teach you how to do that as well. Um, for the skills and competencies in the afternoon, you will want either uh, some CNA mentors once they've gone through this program um, and nurses to help with the skills competencies fair and always offer lunch because everybody does everything for, you know, for lunch. <laughs> so in the chat, can you um, share 
when I was talking about what a mentor would look like at your community, having somebody for every shift, every neighborhood, do you have some individuals that just automatically came to your mind? And if so, what, uh, what qualities do they have? So when you're educating at your community, the mentor trained the trainer, as well as attending the training that we're going to be hosting, um, you're going to have mentor training folder packets. These are going to have all the documents needed. So you'll want to print those and have them assembled um, for all your mentors that are attending the training. These are also going to be, of course, available to you so that you can copy them and have them available during our time together when you attend the mentor train the training um, uh, training training. <laughs> um, um, just, to share, just to share a, an answer we got um, from Yay. Ashley. Yes, she has somebody Yay. in mind and her qualities that come to mind are friendly and hardworking. Um, Tracy says, um, yes, she's got somebody in mind and uh, the qualities are dependability, love for learning, organizational skills, and patience. Oh, Ooh. nice. Oh my gosh. Those are some great adjectives. Great. And Mary says um, ex they, the qualities are excited about training. They're warm and welcoming, knowledgeable of the facility policies and procedures, knowledgeable of residents and their needs, and not afraid to ask questions. Oh, I like that. Not afraid to ask questions. Yes, I think that is a very essential. I, I don't know, but I will find out for you. Absolutely. That's great. Huh. And just to, just to let you know, we've got about 10 minutes left. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, so you will have, um, all the papers to print and get ready for our training together. When you get ready to print this on the right side of your packet is going to be the mentor train the training PowerPoint. And on the left side of the pocket is going to be the mentor train the training left L pocket, meaning left pocket. Um, so just so you're aware, that will be coming to you um, when you're able to download those documents. Again, if you have questions, make sure to reach out to Pat and I via email. We will get back with you um, within 24 hours, um, but generally less. All right, so next steps for success. We're wrapping it up. Um, during this time until uh, the next time that we meet in July, identify that champion, that community mentor champion. It looked like in the chat that most of you have, which is amazing. And you have some of those, um, some of those individuals that, are, that you're already thinking about. Obtain that top level buy-in. I don't think you would be here today if you didn't have that top level buy-in. Um, determine and secure a budget. So again, if you want this to extend for a year, talk with uh, talk as a team what that would look like. If there would be additional uh, money within the budget to uh, to um, pay that mentor um, again during different times of success. Um, or a, a cup of coffee together or lunch or movie tickets or, you know, whatever it is, in addition to that six month bonus. Um, paperwork and clerical um, mentor champ, start thinking about how you can carve out some time in order to have time to work on that paperwork and the clerical components of being a mentor champ. Uh, look at your community competencies, pull those out. Um, start making sure that you have everything that you need. Your CNAs are going to be going through the training through this um, through the WISC Caregiver Careers Path. So take those competencies that they're getting within their training and um, implement those within your community so that you're survey ready and you'll have competencies to train 
uh, in the afternoon after the mentor train the training at your community. How can you implement mentor training and complement this with your clinical orientation that you already have? Um, we're developing the mentor training right now, so you will have a binder, you have all the information that you need. Again, um, identify, uh, which I, it sounds like you already have, some mentors, some CNAs that you can think of as a mentor. You've identified some amazing traits of your associates that you already have. Think every shift, every neighborhood. Um, and then we're gonna be implementing this, which is really exciting. You have to continue that ongoing reinforcement within your community and celebrate the successes. So we will share during the next uh, phase two presentation how to do that. So again, um, next slide, we have the dates for the upcoming trainings. And with that, it looks like we have about five minutes for uh, any questions that you may have. There's also my email, Pat's email. Please reach out to us with any questions that you have. Trust me, we've gone through uh, every scenario, so no question would be silly. So we wanna hear from you. And any questions that uh, I can answer in the chat. Um, Natalie, well, well, everybody's typing in their questions. Um, I, I have a question that, that maybe you can um, answer for us. Um, so you had mentioned about how on the mentee's first day that mm -hmm. their mentor is there waiting for them, they're ready to greet them and welcome mm -hmm. them to the community. Do you tell the mentees that this is going to happen? Like, do they know in advance? Mm -hmm. That, yes. this, that this person will be there? Because I, I could see how knowing that in advance could help people kind of be more yeah. calm. Thank you for asking that. Yes, we work very close. The mentor champ works very closely with the hiring manager. When the hiring manager sends out um, the letter to our new CNA saying, congratulations, you'll be starting at our community. Here are the directions, here's the map, you know, blah, blah, blah. We put into that letter your um, your mentor will be greeting you at, for instance, the front door. Um, your mentor's name is Mary. We are super excited to see you. And here's Mary's phone number. If you have any questions, if you get lost, if you have any questions um, before that first day, please contact Mary. And then Mary gets the new CNA's phone number and she reaches out to the new CNA. And she'll say, hi, Mary, my name's Tannis. I'm your, new, I'm your um, mentor for your onboarding. And this is a little bit of what it looks like. You and I are gonna be working together for the next year. I'm really excited. I'm gonna be the one that's gonna help to onboard you. I'll show you um, how systems are set within our community. I'm gonna introduce you to our um, our residents, I'll be meeting you at the front door with your name tag and your shirt so that you already feel like you're a part of our team because you are. Please park to the left of our community. Um, that's where all of our associates park. And um, please bring your lunch. We have a refrigerator available for you, but we don't have lockers. So please don't bring your purse. Um, just carry your ID and your keys with you. I really look forward to seeing you. Do you have any questions that I could answer? So that new associate has already received a phone call the day before they start. They know where to go. They know to bring their lunch. They know where to park their car. And at the front door is um, Anis, ready to greet our new CNA as they walk through the door. Did that answer your question? Yes, that sounds amazing, actually. I, I'm sure that that could have a big impact, too, on uh, n reducing the no-shows the first day. Oh, my gosh. Yes, absolutely. Because we already have a connection. We've already talked to somebody live. <laughs> and it's like, if, it, if it happens the day before, too, it's like it's fresh in their mind. Yes. They, they, it's like they've re, reaffirmed the commitment that they've made, you know, because there can mm -hmm. always be that that lag between the the day of offer that they accept yes. the offer and then the day that they start. And yes. so that kind of brings it 
all back and is fresh again mm -hmm. so that they're ready to hit the ground and know that somebody's expecting them. They're, they're, yes. they're you know, they're valued. So they're, right. <laughs> we value you. We really want to see you. We're excited to see you. Yes. So, yes. Um, so yeah, so I, I don't see any other questions coming through. So if anybody, okay. you know, if you're still um, typing, I, I don't see anything indicating that there's like open questions or anything like that. But you've got a Pat and Natalie's contact <laughs> info here on the slide. Um, you can also reach out to myself or our customer service team at info at uh, whiskcaregivercna.com. Um, and yeah, thank you again all for um, your participation as our uh, employer network. And thank you, Natalie, for your wonderful wisdom and all the tools. And everybody just keep an eye out on your email. We are going to be emailing you using the registration information that you provided when you signed up for today's webinar to send you the link to the online folder and the password. And that will include all of the materials that Natalie previewed for you today and the recording of today's presentation and the slideshow from today's presentation. So, and Great. we are looking forward to seeing you is it next week, right, Natalie? Next week is our next one. Yes, July 7th from 11 to 12 for phase two. Great, can't wait. Yes. All right, we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Right. Thank you, everyone.